Welcome and thank you for joining me to mark Holocaust Memorial Day. Your attendance is part of the national picture of Holocaust Memorial Day with thousands of activities taking place across the UK, supported by the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. We know that everyone who attends Holocaust Memorial Day events learns more, empathizes more deeply and goes on to take action to build a better future. Holocaust Memorial Day is the international day on the 27th of January to remember the 6 million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, alongside the millions of other people killed under Nazi persecution and in subsequent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. The Holocaust threatened the fabric of civilization and genocide must still be resisted every day. Our world often feels fragile and vulnerable, and we cannot be complacent. Even in the UK, prejudice and the language of hatred must be challenged by us all. We meet today at a time when the UK is divided with many of us experiencing uncertainty, fear and grief. Increasing levels of denial, division and misinformation in today's world mean we must remain vigilant against hatred and identity-based hostility. Yet we know tens of thousands of people are coming together to mark Holocaust Memorial Day to help those in need and to build a better future. Communities are standing in solidarity and experiencing togetherness, even while we are apart. The theme for Holocaust Memorial Day 2021 is Be the Light in the Darkness. It encourages everyone to reflect on the depths humanity can sink to, but also the ways individuals and communities resisted that darkness to be the light before, during and after genocide. Be the Light in the Darkness is an affirmation and a call to action for everyone marking Holocaust Memorial Day. We can all stand in solidarity. We can all choose to be the light in the darkness. The Holocaust Memorial Day Trust is the charity that promotes and supports Holocaust Memorial Day across the UK. Charity's Chief Executive, Livia Marks Waldman, has provided a message to us all. Hello, I'm Olivia Marks Waldman, Chief Executive of the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust, and I'm delighted you're attending this event. You are taking part in one of thousands of activities taking place across the UK to mark Holocaust Memorial Day in schools, prisons, libraries and civic ceremonies. Holocaust Memorial Day is an international day of remembrance to commemorate the six million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust and the millions more murdered under Nazi persecution and in the genocides that followed in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. The 27th of January is the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau the most notorious concentration and extermination camp. Together, we bear witness for all those who were murdered, and we honour the survivors of those regimes and all those whose lives were changed beyond recognition. And there is still much to do to make sure we can live in a world that is free from identity-based persecution and hostility. By the end of this event, I hope that you will all know more about what happened in the past and that you will understand the impact that it had on the individuals who were persecuted and that you will go on to take action. You can find more at our website on hmd.org.uk. I will leave you with the words of Sir Nicholas Winton, who rescued 669 children from Nazi-occupied Europe. He said, Do not be content in your life just to do no wrong. Be prepared every day to try and do some good. Thank you for taking part in Holocaust Memorial Day and for taking the time to learn from genocide for a better future.
In the next film from the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust, we learn about the atrocities that we commemorate on Holocaust Memorial Day and the importance of learning from the past. The 27th of January is Holocaust Memorial Day, the International Day of Remembrance for the victims and survivors of the Holocaust, Nazi persecution and subsequent genocides in Cambodia, Bosnia, Rwanda and Darfur. It gives us an opportunity to reflect on the consequences of discrimination and persecution and learn the lessons of the past. Between 1941 and 1945, the Nazis attempted to annihilate all of Europe's Jews. This systematic and planned genocide is known as the Holocaust. From the time they assumed power in 1933, the Nazis used propaganda, persecution and legislation to deny human and civil rights to Jews. Jews were denied citizenship, forbidden to marry non-Jews, to own businesses and to live in certain areas. The Nazis used centuries of anti-Semitism as their foundation. Nazi persecution extended beyond Jewish people, political opponents, the Roma and Sinti people, disabled people, gay people, Jehovah's Witnesses, Freemasons and black people were all targeted and hundreds of thousands of people were murdered. By the end of the Holocaust, six million Jewish people had been murdered in ghettos, mass shootings, concentration camps and extermination camps. I was 16 years old when we arrived in Auschwitz, Bavenau. Within a minute, I got separated from my mother and two sisters. A few minutes later, I got separated from my father. I had no opportunity to say goodbye to them. And from that day onwards, I never saw them again. After Auschwitz, Eugene was imprisoned at the Buchenwald concentration camp. He was forced to work in the tunnels at the Dora Mittelbau labor camp and was finally imprisoned in the concentration camp at Bergen-Belsen. The scenes in Bergen-Belsen were terrible. There were dead bodies lying all over. The place was infected by typhus. I personally came down to five stone. For 50 years, Eugene said nothing of his ordeals, but now he speaks regularly about the atrocities that he experienced in his youth. In doing so, he has joined a group of survivors who work extremely hard to make sure that the Holocaust will never be forgotten. I've been speaking to universities, colleges, schools for 65 years, ever since I came over to this country in 1946. I've made numerous films about the Holocaust, particularly about Auschwitz, about uh, my time on the Death March, and I have even taken some neo-Nazis back to the camp. It is very important that people understand what happened and learn something from what happened in the past, because we have no guarantee today that it cannot happen again. We believe it can happen to anyone, anywhere, at any time. Sadly, in the years that have passed since the end of the Holocaust, the world has seen genocide take place again and again. In the 1970s, the Khmer Rouge systematically evicted the population of Cambodia from its towns and cities and forced everyone to work on huge collective farms. Anyone who refused or moved too slowly was killed. For three years, eight months and 20 days, we were forced to labor, to work in the rice field from sunrise to sunset with only two bowls of rice soup a day. Jenny, my daughter, was nine when she died and she died of starvation because I had not enough rice to give her to her. To look at your daughter slowly dying of starvation this is really hard for a mother, and I will never forget this. 
In Cambodia, the number of people murdered reached two million. In Rwanda, using little more than clubs and machetes, members of the Hutu people massacred almost a million men, women, children and babies who belonged to either the Tutsi people or moderate Hutus. It was 10 o'clock in the morning when the Mirish has come to attack in the, our house. And um, I managed to escape, just jumping through the window but my family could make it. I climbed the tree, which was in the backyard. I could hear the, the sound of crying and moaning inside the house. But unfortunately, a few minutes later, those sound has stopped. That's when I knew everybody was dead. In former Yugoslavia, the Serbs targeted Bosnia in their wish for political domination. They were prepared to achieve this by isolating and even exterminating ethnic groups. I was taken away together with my brother and the rest of the villagers and I ended up in the Omarska concentration camp. During my stay in the Omarska camp, um, I was treated worse than a rat. My life was worth less than life of a rat. The worst aspect of being kept in the Omarska camp was the fact that the place was guarded by my former schoolmates, former neighbours, former policemen who, whose protection I relied before the war, and even former teachers. But lessons remain unlearned. Genocide is still taking place today. Right now, in the Darfur region of Sudan, against a backdrop of civil war and with the backing of the Sudanese government, Members of the Arab population are currently persecuting black African farmers who they see as inferior people. To date, millions of people have been displaced and hundreds of thousands of men, women and children have been murdered in Darfur. On Holocaust Memorial Day, we have a chance to think about what we can do to put an end to persecution and discrimination. My hope for the Holocaust Memorial Day is for the people to learn about the genocide so that it won't happen again. The more people commemorate the Holocaust on Holocaust Memorial Day, the more awareness there will be of the dangers and the more people will learn. I hope that the Holocaust Memorial Day can inspire people, especially young people, to understand that you know, they, they can make a difference, that one person can make a difference. I want to ask young people, as they are the decision makers of the future, to learn the lessons of the past so that these crimes will never happen again. My dearest wish and hope is for us to live in harmony, to respect each other, and learn to live and let live. We all have the opportunity to use Holocaust Memorial Day to learn the lessons of the past to create a safer, better future. Despite the horrors of the Holocaust and Nazi persecution, and more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur, people continue to be subject to persecution and violence based on their identities in the UK and around the world. In December 2019, the United Nations passed a resolution strongly condemning right abuses against the Rohingya Muslims and other minority groups in Manama, including arbitrary arrests, torture, rape, and deaths in detention. 
Manama has been accused of genocide against the Rohingya and more than 700,000 Rohingya refugees have fled to Bangladesh since the August 2017 to escape the violence. In this film from the UK Ceremony for Holocaust Memorial Day 2020, actress Georgina Campbell reads the testimony of Hansu Mala, a Rohingya Muslim from the Rakhine state of Myanmar. This is her story. This is the testimony of Hansu Mala, a Rohingya Muslim from Myanmar. She grew up in Tula Tolly, where the Burmese military committed a massacre in 2017. Hansu and her family escaped to a refugee camp in Bangladesh. The treatment of us Muslims was getting gradually worse and worse. In August 2017, the military were closely guarding and watching our village for no reason. Every few days, they would round all of us up. They would choose people at random, claiming they were suspicious characters. They would beat some, throw some into jail. We were living in fear. Whenever we would hear that the military is coming, everyone would be afraid and hide in the hills. If they saw a pretty girl, they would go after her and rape her. We witnessed how they beat, cut, and slaughtered all the innocent people. They made the Rohingya people dig their own graves. All the able-bodied men were told to dig the holes. In that hole, they threw all the bodies. They poured gasoline into the hole all over the bodies and set it ablaze. We saw everything they were doing. They have killed so many of us. Can you imagine how we feel? The Holocaust and the genocides that followed shook the foundations of society. These tragedies demonstrate the deadly consequences of allowing hatred and prejudice to go unchecked. But genocide doesn't happen overnight. It is a process which can be stopped at any stage through acts of kindness, resistance, and stories of hope. For the 2019 UK Holocaust Memorial Day ceremony, the Fourth Choir, London's LGBT plus chamber choir, performed Somewhere Over the Rainbow, one of the world's best known songs. It was written in 1938 by Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg, two Jewish Americans, and it embodies a longing for a better world during troubled times.
I would like to thank you for joining me today. To conclude the ceremony, I invite you all to join me in lighting a candle. We light each candle in memory of all those who were murdered in the Holocaust, and the Nazi persecution, and in the genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and Darfur. We remember them. Please join me for a minute of silence. <laughs> 